Hi everyone, it's Angela from Shins Greens and today's a really exciting day because we are expanding the Shins Greens garden. Now, some of you may know Kevin and I have been trying to buy a house for almost four years now and we still don't have a house, but it's not going to stop me from expanding my garden. So as you can see behind me, there's a beautiful piece of land and I met a really nice woman in my neighborhood who has this yard that she's not using. I mean, um, this is just wasted space right here. There is just so much potential. So I'm going to be renting this spot from her and I'm going to be building a vegetable raised bed garden from scratch, from start to finish. I'm going to show you the whole process. So here we go. Okay, this is full sun exposure right here. This is such a great spot, easy to work with. And so I'm really, really excited about this spot. I'm using two by six untreated wood boards that I got from Home Depot. So these are two inches thick and the height of the raised beds will be six inches. And I've decided to go with only six inches because I do have soil underneath these raised beds. If you're planting on top of concrete, I would recommend at least two feet height minimum. Now, the taller you go with these raised beds, the more added cost there will be from the soil that you need to fill the raised beds. So I've used these cement corner pieces with these slots so they fit in really well. So I don't need any power tools, no screws or nails or anything as it's really easy to put together. Hey everyone, so I've got all of my raised beds built. I've had a couple guys help me put this together and it was actually really fast. It took probably one hour tops to build all the raised beds. So it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. So I also bought a lot of topsoil, this organic topsoil to fill in the raised beds. I brought a lot of cardboard that I'm going to place down over the grass and then put the compost on top of that and that'll hopefully smother most of the grass. So one thing you want to make sure to do is to cover up any openings you see by layering it with an extra piece of cardboard. You really don't want any of that grass peeking through. Okay, so I've laid down cardboard along in between the raised beds to smother out the weeds. And I'm gonna add wood chips on top of all of this.
So in order to enrich this very sandy soil, I've created a couple of in-ground composting holes and that way I can just throw kitchen scraps right underneath. So I'm gonna lift this up. Okay, so here I've got homemade worm castings from my worm bin. Okay, we're gonna be planting these King Tut purple peas. Aren't these beautiful? So these are courtesy of Emma. <laughs> Thank you, Emma, for getting these seeds. And let's go ahead and plant them right here. I'm at my new front yard raised bed vegetable garden. And this is really the moment I've been waiting so long for. So over the last six weeks, I've worked really hard in putting down cardboard over all of the grass, building the raised beds, filling it with topsoil, mixing in the compost, putting the wood chip mulch right on top. And so it's been a lot of fun, but also a lot of work. It's all been leading up to this moment where I finally get to transplant all of my seedlings. So right now we're in December, so we're doing winter vegetables. And I am pretty late in the game for most of my winter vegetables, but I'm going to plant them anyway. I've got another tray of seedlings here. So I'm going to show you all the seedlings that I've started in the last month. And I'm going to take you around and I have already planted some seeds directly in the ground. Now I've learned so much in the last six weeks just with this new raised bed garden. And I've discovered that the soil here in this plot is very sandy. The water just drains right through. So over time, I'm gonna have to add on more and more layers of organic matter to hold on to all that water and nutrients so that it doesn't all just drain right through. And that is gonna take time, you know, probably maybe even years to build up that organic layer. But it's really gonna help transform this sandy soil into a nutrient dense, rich, soil that we can grow just about anything in. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So I've got some red cabbages, kale, parsley, beets, Swiss chard, cauliflower, and I think I've got oh, some more kale over here. So we're going to go ahead and transplant these. I do have some of the seeds already sprouting directly in the ground. And over here I have some herbs. I've got some parsley, oregano, thyme, spinach, and here I've got some broccoli, lots of broccoli, and some more beets. All right, let's get started. It's been about six weeks since I've started this raised bed vegetable garden and it's looking really great so far. Now I've got my first two raised beds planted out so we're going to take a look around and see what's growing so far. Now the three raised beds that you see behind me, those were built on type of grass. So I've laid cardboard over the grass and topped it off with soil, compost, and mulch. And I'm gonna wait as long as I can before I plant out in those three raised beds behind me because I need the grass underneath to die off as much as possible. 
if I plant in it too soon, a lot of the grass will shoot up right through the raised beds. I'm gonna be pulling out a lot of grass throughout the season. And so the longer I wait, the better off I'll be. Um, ideally, I would wait three months before I plant out those beds, but I can't possibly wait that long. So I'm gonna wait probably about um, six or seven weeks before I start planting in the first raised bed. And I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed and hope that not all the grass just starts shooting up through the raised beds. So let's take a look around and see what's growing in these two raised beds. So let's check out these two beds here. In the back row along here, I have sugar snap peas. I have some kale planted right here. I have some carrots here. Here I have some beets. And here I have some onions. This is a short day onion because we are in a warm climate in Southern California. And I have another row of onions right here. Here I have some red cabbage. And this right here is a volunteer sunflower. This is a mammoth sunflower, just came up out of my compost. Here I've planted some magnolia tendril peas. Those haven't come up yet. I have some strawberries here and some more strawberries that are growing so beautifully and doing really well right now. I have Chinese broccoli. And these are regular broccoli. This is another volunteer sunflower. I've transplanted some of my bachelor buttons along here, along the edge. Again, they are so low maintenance. They're very hardy, grow really well, and they produce a lot of flowers that attract bees and other pollinators. So they're really good for your garden. Here I've got some daikon radishes. I believe these are Swiss chard. These are French breakfast radishes. And there's one ranunculus that has sprouted. I've got some leeks in here. It's just coming up. I think this might be red cabbage. I think. I didn't label any of my plants. So once they start growing on, then I'll, I'll know what it is. But all the brassica seedlings pretty much look the same when they first sprout. So it's hard to tell what's what. I've got snow peas. And these are the Alaska pea, which is a shelling pea. And it looks like I've got, an, I don't know if this is an albino or what, but there's always a lot of genetic diversity when you garden and sometimes you get surprises like that. I don't know if this is still gonna grow and produce food, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Yeah, I've got some spinach growing in here. and some more spinach. Now I absolutely love spinach and I'll eat a ton of it. So I'm gonna just plant as much spinach as I can. And this is bok choy. Okay, this one might be a cauliflower and another cauliflower. All the plants were grown from seed. Now you can absolutely just buy plants from a nursery. You can absolutely do that and there's no problem with doing that. Now, I just happen to love growing from seed. It's really economical and it's really fun. You just get so much bang for your buck and it's really fun to watch these tiny little seedlings grow. So there you go. Those are my first two raised beds that I have planted so far. Now, I already have big plans for these three raised beds. I, I just know I'm gonna fill up these beds very quickly and I can't wait to grow in them. I can't wait to show you the progress over time of how we convert this unused, underappreciated grass lawn into a lush, beautiful, vibrant food forest that's gonna give us organic food year round. And I'm just so excited to share this journey with you. So I hope you guys stay tuned and thank you so much for watching Shins Greens. I'll see you guys next time.